Japan. Japan. It's a place. A place that's produced a lot of cool stuff and a lot of it is actually behind me. But how much of the history of Japan do I know? If this dive into history has taught me anything, the answer is going to be probably not much. But today, we're going to look at the history of Japan. Welcome back, friends, and a special welcome, welcome to all the new friends out there. I'm Yo BGS, and I've been digging this dive into the world of history that has come courtesy of a lot of what you've been suggesting for me. And what I'd love to know is if there are any other awesome history channels that have kind of a funny, fun slant to things, let me know in the comments down below because I'm always looking for suggestions for some new videos. And if you like this kind of content, please make sure to check and see if you're subscribed because it helps the channel out more than you know. Now, here we go, History of Japan. Japan is an island by the sea filled with volcanoes and it's beautiful. All right, perfect video. We're done. Hopefully you have a good day. Uh, no atrocities, no weird things. We just know that Japan, it's an island, it's beautiful, and, and that is uh, how it's going to remain, I assume. In the year negative a billion, Japan... Never mind. Japan might not have been here. In the year negative 40,000, it was here, and you could walk to it, and some people walked to it. Then it got warmer, some icebergs melted, it became an island, and now there's lots of trees, because it's warmer. <laughs> So now there's people on the island, they're basically sort of hanging out in between the mountains, eating nuts off trees, and using the latest technology, like stones and bowls. Ding dong, it's the outside world, and they have technology from the future, like really good metal and crazy rice farms. Now you can make a lot of rice. Why, by the way, why did... It's always interesting to me that people bring their technology, especially in these early ages, to other lands. You would assume, like, if you have bronze, your biggest concern is, like, not having a tree fall on you. So traveling to Japan, right? Like people in 40,000 BC can travel to Japan, but I can't in 2022. Really, really quickly. That means if you own the farm, you own a lot of food, which is something everybody needs to survive. So yes. that makes you king. Rice huh? farming and rice kingdoms spread across the land all the way to here. The most important kingdoms were here, 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 and here. But this... So the most important kingdoms were all of the kingdoms. Also, I love how we're just casually at like zero AD now. In the history of the world, it took us like 20 minutes to get there. We're there in 47 seconds. One was the most, most important, ruled by a heavenly super person, or emperor for short. Oh. Knock, knock, get the door. It's religion. The new prince wants everyone to try this hot new religion from Biekt. Please try this religion, he said. No, said everybody. Try it, he said. <laughs> no, said everybody again, quieter this time. And so the religion was put into place, and all the rules that came with it. Then the government was taken over by another clique, and they made some reforms, like making the government govern more, and making the government more like China's government, which is a government that governs more. Hi, China, they said. Hi, dipshit, said China. What? <laughs> what? Governs more. Hi, China, they said. Okay, it was the Tiang Dynasty. Said, hi, dipshit. <laughs> that doesn't look like what they said. I'm just saying. Said China. Can you call us something else other than dipshit? Said Japan. Like what? Said China. How about Sunrise Land? Said Japan. And they stole China's alphabet and wrote a book about themselves. Okay, so I'm calling some people out here. Leave a comment down below if like after you watch Bill Wirt's videos, you have to sing things for the rest of the day. Cause I guarantee you that's gonna be me. I'll just be wandering around like now I'm doing the dishes. And you feel bad cause you're just completely biting his style, but like, it's too good to not. Also, it's kind of scanning this stuff in the background. A lot of details. And then they made lots of poetry and art and another book about themselves. Then they stopped moving the capital every time the emperor died and kept it in one place for a while. Right here. Good idea. And they conquered the north, finally. Get that squared away. A rich hipster named Kukai is bored with modern Buddhism, visits China, and learns a better version, which is more spiritual. Comes back, reinvents the alphabet, and causes art and literature to be great for a long time. Let's go. See, that sounds... That, like, historically, that sounds like the place you want to be, where art's great, literature's great. They're even, you know, taking a look at religion and being like, how can we make this more fun? And, you know, because I think about Christianity and they were lowering people onto spikes, you know, and I'm like, okay, maybe less of that would be cool, too. And the royal palace turned into such a dream world of art that they really didn't give a shit about running the country. So if you live outside the palace, how are you supposed to protect your shit? From oh. criminals. Hire a samurai. Everyone started hiring samurai. Rich, important people hired samurai. Poor people who could not afford to hire samurai did not hire samurai. The samurai became organized. Well, I mean, did the poor people who could not afford to hire samurai, I would guess they became samurai. Although it's, we, we, we see this a lot in history, right? 
they find ways to make it so that the poor people can't have the important job, so then they just stay poor people. People hate when I editorialize like this in videos, but I'm just saying, like, it's a thing, right? To hire samurai did not hire samurai. The samurai became organized and powerful, more powerful than the government, so they made their own military government. Here, uh -oh. they let the emperor still be emperor, but the shogun is actually in control. Breaking news, the Mongols have invaded China. We've invaded China, said the Mongols. Please respect us, or else we might invade you as well. Okay, said Japan. <laughs> so the Mongols came over, ready for war. At least it was a convenient time to have the military government in place when the greatest conqueror in the history of history is on his way over. At least now you've got pointy sticks to go along with the pen. Okay, said Japan. So the Mongols came over, ready for war, and died in a tornado. But they tried again and had a nice time fighting with the Japanese, but then died in a tornado. Then the emperor overthrows the shogunate. Then the shogunate overthrows him back and moves to Kyoto and makes a new shogunate. And the emperor can still dress what? like an emperor if he wants. That's fine. Now what? More like what? What? I know. Yeah, people and people play a drinking game. They drink every time I say what in these videos. It's a fact. It's something you're gonna have to live with. Then the emperor overthrows the shogunate. Then that already is an underdog story in and of itself because the shogunate is consisting of the military and the emperor is just about art. And the shogunate overthrows him back and moves. How? Because they've already been overthrown, so when did they come back in a short amount of time? Moves to Kyoto and makes a new shogunate. And the emperor can still dress like an emperor if he wants. That's hey. fine. Now there's more art. Like painting with less colors, collaborative poetry, plays, monkey fun, tea parties, gardening, architecture, flowers. It's time for who's going to be the next shogun. Usually it's the shogun's kid, but the shogun doesn't have a kid. So he tries to get his brother to quit being a monk and be the next shogun. He says, okay, but then the Shogun has a kid. So now who's it going to be? Uh-oh. Right now on your phones. Uh, I'm going to vote for, oh boy. Usually when this happens, neither of them end up being the thing because they're both going to take each other out. So I'm going to text three to 8181818142069. And everyone voted so hard that the palace caught on fire and burned down. The Shogun actually didn't care. He was off somewhere doing poetry. And the whole country broke into pieces. Everyone is fighting with each other for local power. And it's anybody's game. Knock knock. It's Europe. No, they're not here to take over. They just want to sell some shit, like clocks and guns and Jesus. Oh, so cool, you knew it was coming. Each other for control. Now with guns, and wouldn't it be nice to control the capital, which right now is puppets with no one controlling them? This clan is ready to make a run for it, but first they have to trample this smaller clan, which is in the way. Surprise! The smaller clan wins, and the leader of that clan steals the idea of invading the capital and invades the capital. But does it, Nobunaga? That is a game. <laughs> Do I have? I don't have it. Oh, it's expensive. Just kidding. Clan steals the idea of invading. Follow my Patreon so I can buy games like that. In the capital. Just kidding. I don't have a Patreon. It invades the capital, and it goes very well. He's about halfway through conquering Japan when someone who works for him kills him, and then someone else who works for him kills them, and that guy finishes conquering Japan. And then he confiscated everybody's swords and made some rules. And now I'm going to invade Korea, and then hopefully China. I have to go back because I have to see the rules again. Oh, the Nobunaga's Ambition. That was the name of the game. And I guess, obviously, he won because he took over. But then, you know, well, that's not very good. No having a sword or a gun. No climbing the social ladder. Of course. Pay taxes. Of course. No rules. thank you. And now I'm going to invade Korea and then hopefully China, he said, and failed and also died. But before he died, he told these five guys to take care of his five-year-old son until he's old enough to be the next ruler of Japan. And the five guys said, yeah, right. It's not going to be this kid. It's going to be one of us because we're grown-ups. And it's probably going to be this guy who happens to be way more rich and powerful than the others. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, don't show that! I'm going to have to censor that! Him, but a lot of people support not supporting him. They have a fight, and he wins, and starts a new government, right here. And he still lets the emperor dress like an emperor, and have very nice things. But don't get confused, this is the new government, and they are very strict. So strict they close the country. No one can leave, and no one can come in. Except for the Dutch, if they want to buy and sell shit, but they have to do it right here. That feels grossly unenforceable given the small population and access to the coastline. Now that the entire country was not at war with itself, the population increased a lot. Business increased. That's what people do when they're Words not killing each other. Everyone learned to read. Books were published. There was poetry, plays, sexy times, puppet shows, and Dutch studies. People started to study European science from books they bought from the Dutch. We're talking geography, skeletons, physics, chemistry, astronomy, and maybe even electricity. Over time, the economic and cultural prosperity began to gradually slow down. Not what? Oh, that's, first of all, that's not good. Second of all, I mean, th this seems like the place to be. If you had to be in any country at any point in time, like, and it was random, you know, you roll two D20s, you end up at a part of the world at a point in time. As long as one of those die landed on Japan, it seems like you had an okay time. Just now, maybe not so much. Knock. It's the United States with huge boats, with guns, 
Great, please. Gunboats. Great, please. Open the country. Don't make us look Stop bad. Having it be closed. Said Don't the make United us look States. bad. There's really nothing they could do, so they signed a contract that lets the United States, Britain, and Russia visit Japan anytime they want. Choshu and Satsuma hated this. That sucks, they said. This sucks. And with almost very little outside help, they overthrew the shogunate and somehow made the emperor the emperor again and moved him to Edo, he which they renamed the Eastern Capital. They made a new government, which was a lot more Western. They made a new constitution that was pretty Western and a military that was pretty Western. And do you know what else is Western? Large. That's right. It's conquering stuff. So what can we conquer? Korea. They conquer Korea. Take. But this is one of those things where like, I don't know. Is there any problem with letting people be people? Apparently there is because, you know, this happens. ...from its previous owner, China, and then go a little bit further. And Russia rushes in out of nowhere and says, Stop, no, you can't take that. We were going to build a railroad through here to try to get some warm water. And Russia builds their railroad, supervised by a shit ton of soldiers. And then when the railroad was done, they downgraded to a fuck ton. Did I say downgrade? I meant upgrade. Good and Japan Lord. Says, Can you maybe chill? And Russia says, how about maybe you chill? Japan is kind of scared of Russia. You'll never guess who's also kind of scared of Russia. Great Britain. So Japan and Great Britain make an alliance together so they can be a little less scared of Russia. Feeling confident, Japan goes to war against I feel Russia. like that's basically the state of the world now. Just for a moment, and then they both get tired and stop. It's time for World War I. No, The world is about stop. to have a war. Because it's the 1900s and weapons are getting crazy, and all these empires are excited to try them out on each other. Meanwhile, Japan has been enjoying conquering stuff and wants more. And the next thing on their list is this part of China and lots of tiny islands. All that stuff belongs to Germany, which just had war declared on it by Britain because Britain was friends with Belgium, which was being trespassed by Germany in order to get to France to kick France's ass because France is friends with Russia, who was getting ready to kick Austria's ass because Austria was getting ready to kick Serbia's ass because someone from Serbia shot the leader of Austria's ass. Or actually shot him in the head. So this proves that no matter how old we get, Nonsense school drama is just the thing, right? It's just the weapons that get crazier because this is this is a situation of who can't sit by who at the lunch table just writ so large and in a way that's going to cause so much trauma to so many people for generations. How does this tie into Japan? And Britain is currently friends with Japan. So Never mind. But you know what that means. Duh. Japan should take the islands. Which they wanted to do anyway. So they called Britain on the telly to sort of let them know. And then they did it. And they also helped Britain a little here and there with some errands and stuff. Now the war is over. And congratulations, Japan. You technically fought in the war, which means you get to sit at the negotiating table with the big What? Dudes. Again, like, that's not... Jeez. And of course, it's 80 bajillion American people. 80 bajillion... Oh. Half cropped out of the photo. Where they decided who owns what. And yes, Japan gets to keep all that shit they stole from Germany. You also get to join the post-war mega alliance, the League of Nations, whose mission statement is to try not to take over the world. The Great Depression is bad. But they're Japan's going economy to, is now kind crappy, of. But the military is doing just fine, and it invades Manchuria. And the League of Nations is like, no, don't do that. If you're in the League of Nations, you're not supposed to take over the world. And Japan said, how about I do? <laughs> and Japan invaded more and more and more and more of China and was planning to invade the entire East. You've got mail. It's from Germany, the new leader of Germany. He has a cool mustache and he's trying to take over the world and needs friends. This also got forwarded to Italy. They all decided to be friends because they- I feel like, didn't it? But see, from oversimplified, Italy forwarded it to Germany who then forwarded it to Japan. But I'm still, I'm still blown, like mind blown by the fact that, again, a, a, a an area populated this, you know, by this sparse amount of people planned to hold control over all of this and actually managed to. Yes. You've got mail. It's from Germany, the new leader of Germany. He has a cool mustache and he's trying to take over the world and needs friends. This also got forwarded to Italy. They all decided to be friends because they had so much in common. It's time for World War II. Germany is invading the neighbors. Then they invade the neighbors' neighbors. Then the neighbors' neighbors' neighbors, who happened to be Britain, said, Holy shit. And the United States started helping Britain because they are good friends. And started not helping Japan because they're friends and our friends are not friends. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? How do you... How do you go about the rest of your day and not be like, they're friends and a friends and a friends? The United States started helping Britain because they are good friends and started not helping Japan. Because see, I know friends. way more about the inner workings of this because of oversimplified. This is why I'm trying to historically educate myself to not be such a dingus. Our friends are not friends. Plus they're planning on invading the entire ocean. The United States is also working on a large, very huge bomb. Bigger than any other bomb. Ever. Just in case. 
But they still haven't joined the war. War looks bad on TV, and the United States is yeah, really no starting joke. to care about their image. But then Japan spits on them in Hawaii and challenges them to war. And they say yes. And then Germany, as a symbol of friendship, declares war on the United States also. So the United States goes to war in Europe, and they help the gang chase Germany back into Germany. And they also start chasing Japan back into Japan. And just millions of people were ended in that 10 seconds of pithy dialogue. And they haven't used the bomb yet and are curious to see if it works. So they drop it on Japan. They actually dropped two. Awkward silence. Awkward silence. What about the singing? The United States installed a new government, inspired by the United States government. Again? the right ingredients for a post-war economic miracle. And Japan starts making TVs, VCRs, automobiles, and camcorders as fast as they can, and also better than everybody else. They get rich, and the economy goes wild. Everything and then back wears here. Off. But everything's still pretty cool, I guess. Bye. That's it? What? No! What? Fast as they can, and also better than everybody else. They get rich, and the economy goes wild. And then the miracle wears off. But everything's still pretty cool, I guess. Bye. So the miracle wore off, but everything is still cool. I mean... Now, this is where I have to ask for people who know these things, obviously, way better than I do. What is what is the broader sense of things right now? My Again, my knowledge of Japan is limited to what I see on Tokyo Tones, where he just kind of posts videos of himself walking around various parts of... Um, oh, you know, what's the name of it? It's the place with the, the really big station, the gigantic crosswalk, and the name always escapes me. And I think he walked through, like, Akihabara as well, but... So what is the status? Let me know in the comments down below. And like I said at the beginning, if there are any other history-based channels, like uh, things that can help us learn things, make me less of a dingus, let me know in the comments down below. If you like these kind of videos, please make sure to subscribe. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, and they're a lot of fun because of you and your comments and, and all of the kind of back and forth we've been having. So thanks for checking out the video. Take care, my friends. And as always, I will see you, or whatever the next one may be.